see as maybe someone that's famous, or someone who could be accomplished of a lot of things, like maybe um, Thomas Edison, Albert Einstein, Bill Gates, any one of those kind of people. Um, living in this area, uh, this is the kind of person that I want to show you because they're around from here. They're not like famous or anything, but I'm going to inform you of someone's compelling journey and uh, I'll begin where she is today. Um, this person is my mother, Carmen. Um, my mom started off um, that I know of with background of this story. We started off in Michigan. Um, we made our way over to Two Rivers and uh, she's quite a different area than where she was when we started off. Um, when we started off in Michigan, I don't remember much of that, like what she did, so I'm not gonna really uh, branch off that, but in Two Rivers, when I was younger, um, I'd say maybe I was around seven or eight at the time, she was working at a factory called Tramontina. Um, she was kind of just like going on with her day. Um, it wasn't something she wanted to do, but uh, as a family, um, we were struggling at the time, so that was kind of something she needed to do to get everything to go with it. Um, like I said, I don't really remember much of it because I was kind of young. And uh, all I remember about this situation was during Christmas Eve one night, we were all kind of just huddling around uh, the floor, like opening presents and stuff. And she comes home and she says, uh, yeah, we had an incident at work today. And we're kind of like, what's going on? Because she was kind of panicked. But it wasn't really a panic that you would think like, oh my god, we need to call somebody. But it was more of like a, a panic in a situation that you would see something that you wouldn't normally see in a day. Um, she told us that somebody there had got their hand stuck in one of the belts at work and uh, they kind of had to like just fix that situation. Like it was kind of a weird thing for us to notice um, because I didn't know what, like I don't really think I knew what a conveyor belt was so I didn't really know but they kind of just told me like her hand was kind of on this thing and it kind of just blended and it got stuck in there. I don't know how that happened but it was kind of interesting. But um, I wasn't a very smart child, I'm going to say that, so it kind of hurt her in a little bit because she had to deal with me. Um, I didn't really learn how to tie my shoes until I was in the third grade, so yeah, I didn't really learn much. But uh, other than that, like with me, my mom went through some hardships in life. Um, starting off in 2006, she lost my brother and her son to, uh, he had diagnosed with this uh, glycogen storage disease. He was told he was going to live until age four but he ended up making it to 16 years old, which is quite remarkable for somebody with this specific case. And uh, shortly after, in 2008, her mother passed away, which was an extremely heartbreaking time for her because she didn't know how she was gonna handle losing her son and then losing her mother with that. Um, but thankfully, everybody was there, like me and my brothers. Uh, my oldest brother was there in town at the time. Um, he's currently not around because he's in school and stuff, but. Everybody was there, my, my brother, my dad, we were all there to support her. But at the same time, as uh, my brother and her son died, uh, I was more hurt by it than she was, I would say. Like, she was probably hurt just about as much as me, but I, I kind of made it like, seem like it was uh, a bigger situation than I should have. Um, there was a situation where like, maybe once or twice, or it's happened before, but uh, I would say like, I would just kind of like not feel it bad during school and uh, I would just kind of start falling out of nowhere and I'd have to get sent home because I couldn't handle it. But my mom, she worked her ass off and she went to work every single day. She did what she had to do and she had to get past it in order for herself to succeed. Um, it was, it was kind of hard for us to deal with this whole situation with uh, everybody kind of not being too happy about it. and. Uh, the fact that we lost somebody that was in our house. Um, it was just really hard to soak in. And um, after that, she even got another job. She ended up working at Kohl's in the freight department. Um, and that wasn't something that she actually liked doing, but it was something that she did because she had to. She could, she had to keep working, she couldn't stop because she knew that she had to be there to support us at all times. And um, after that, she quit there and she went and ventured on to a completely new lifestyle and she went to this place called um, Northridge Medical and Rehabilitation Center. This place is where literally everything started to look out for her. Um, then she worked, she started here, I'd say about seven years ago she started. She started off as a dietary aide in the kitchen department and um, that's where she's been this whole time. And as she's been there, 
all of these things have just kind of came back on her. Um, not to mention that in 2008 also her mother-in-law died, so she had that creeping up on her as well. Um, there was just a lot of deaths with the family, and it was kind of really hard for her. Like She even lost her dad, and um, she also lost her brother-in-law, so it was kind of kind of difficult for everything to just balance out. Um, but she was she's one of the most strongest women that I know in my life, and I admire that extremely. Um, my mother is currently 55 years old, and I'm 18, and I know a lot of people that are around my age that I went to school with, or maybe that I just kind of see like on social media or something that will say, oh, I hate my job, I'm so tired of working all the time, this is kind of ridiculous. Well, my mom being 55 years old, obviously she doesn't have the best bones or the best joints like as, as younger people have. Um, every Wednesdays, she's, now she, I forgot to say this earlier, but with this job, she ended up becoming a manager in this kitchen department, and she's been doing that for six years, and with this job, um, they have state come through and kind of inspect the kitchen to see how it's running. And uh, she ended up getting a perfect, a perfect survey every single time that she's been there for a manager, so I'd say it's about five years. And um, that's pretty impressive, because something like that's hard to do. Um, I've been in that kitchen before, and that kitchen is really kind of complex to clean and get through everything. Like, they went behind all the machines, they cleaned everything, went in the ice machine, got everything clean in there. It's kind of just a big mess, but she made it work. Um, but on Wednesdays with her job, she has, like, the usual load come in. Like, she has to, like, put stuff away, um, heavy cans, big boxes of stuff. Uh, potatoes are a really big thing that get heavy after a while, once you kind of start uh, bagging them up to put them in boxes. Uh, I actually had to help her one day do it because she was so, just, like, her body was just not having it because she's just getting tired from doing that every Wednesday, being her age. But with this, um, it just kind of shows that someone who can go through hardships, such as losing so many family members and still having to deal with other things like work and her family at the same time, uh, it, it's just incredible to me. Um, I, I honestly don't believe that I'd ever be able to do something like that only because I know what kind of person I am. I'm lazy as hell and I, I really just, I don't know, sometimes just motivation just isn't there. But um, when she was she was starting this job, she had to take online college courses. Actually, she decided to. Um, and by doing that, she was at home. My brother and I kind of had to bother her with that, but she made it through it and that's kind of just what happened. But um, that sometimes she'd also have to stay later to show that uh, because people wouldn't show up, and I just think that shows dedication. And uh, I just I appreciate all the hard work that she puts in, and I wouldn't be any more grateful than to do this commemorative speech on anybody else.